Frank Lloyd Wright is arguably the most iconic American architect the world has seen. His palette for design was inexhaustible, creating projects like the Guggenheim in New York, Falling Water in Stewart Township, Pennsylvania, the Frank Lloyd Wright School of Architecture, Taliesin in Spring Green, Wisconsin, and the masterpiece that is Taliesin West in Scottsdale, Arizona. It wasn't until Frank Lloyd Wright was 72 years old that he would decide to build Taliesin West, which would inspire some of the greatest achievements in architecture for the next 20 years of his life. Well, hello, everybody. Today we're here with Arnold Roy. Thanks for having us. Yes, thank and you. And tell the folks where we are today. <laughs> we're in Frank Lloyd Wright's living room, which he always referred to as the garden room because you have the view of the garden. And Frank Lloyd Wright's architecture was always bring the outside in. Yeah, so, you can feel it so right you when you walk in. So you can see the garden. There, yeah. there are no obstruction, no visual obstructions. This room originally, <laughs> in the early days was redwood and canvas because Taliesin West started as a desert winter camp. They had very little money and they had to scrimp and scrape. And so it was camp. Literally camp. Redwood and canvas. Wow. In fact, the first structure that they built out in the desert, which is no longer there, was a cook tent. Okay, Makes gotta sense. eat, right? <laughs> and then, they worked from there and then they started building the drafting room and, and the shops and other areas. Uh, basically, Taliesin West was completed, if you want to say completed, because it's always been a work in progress, uh, in about four years, from 1937 to 1941. And then during the war years, they were not able to travel. And then in the late 40s, Frank Lloyd Wright came back, looked at Taliesin West with new eyes, and started making terrific changes. Mrs. Wright was trying to get him to make Taliesin West a little bit more livable instead of a camp. Well, he <laughs> and, came out here for his health, didn't he? Absolutely. Yeah, From he Wisconsin, had, I believe. He'd contracted pneumonia, and the doctor told Mrs. Wright, if you want to extend your husband's life, you better get them to a milder climb in the wintertime, okay. <laughs> not Wisconsin. <Yeah. laughs> and so they came out here, purchased some land, and started the construction of Taliesin well, West. He was a little older when he started this deal. Frank Lloyd Wright was 70 years old when he started the construction of Taliesin wow. West. He was starting a whole new life. <laughs> and he brought in all the young people, and it just revitalized him. It was that incredible symbiotic relationship with the young people. With and you happen to be one of them, didn't and you? I, well, I was, came a little bit later. Okay. I, I joined the fellowship in 1952 from Boston. Okay. And I had worked mightily to put together one year's tuition, not realizing it's an eight-year program. <laughs> and friends and family said, hey, dummy, I've got to do this. Yeah. <laughs> and Frank Lloyd Wright was very generous. He gave me seven years of scholarship. Oh, that's amazing. But you said he was no dummy. He is no fool. Don't try to pull a fast one on him. <laughs> or what, what was the thing you said? This is what I really like. So what, what, do you, what if you mess up, what do you do? Because he worked on the farm, you said. Yeah. He was, as a young man, he worked on the farm very hard. He was very accustomed to hard work. And in fact, in his writings, he talks about adding tired to tired and rest by and, and, and it was a lot of it you were telling me, he sketched things out. Tell him how it worked here, you know, because it was different. He would have a, an idea, and he was one of the few architects, I'm still working at this, he was able to design the entire project in his head. Everything, color, shades, textures, people moving through the building, and then he would go to paper, sketch it out, give it to one of the architects, and the architect would refine it a little bit more, and then eventually we'd end up with the drawings, and. So it. it was a, a very coherent uh, process, the way it worked, from the sketch of Frank Lloyd Wright to the finished project. In fact, there was a show at the Phoenix Art Museum several years ago, and they had one of his early sketches, very simple, bold, and then over here next to it was what we call the schematic drawing which is a refinement of the sketch. And then next to that was a photograph of the finished building. 
fast. And you can go bing, bing, bing. Wow, and it was all here. He knew it before he even put on paper. It was so well thought out in sketch form that the finished building looked exactly like the sketch. Well, that's why he's one of the greatest architects of all time. Absolutely. Uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, uh, in his writings, he talks about Arizona being America's playground. Wow. And that was in 1929. Wow when things were still pretty wild and woolly out here. Mm-hmm. And so he came out here and he purchased this land, like 500 acres, and Scottsdale was a little crossroads 12 miles from here, yeah. and there was nothing in between. Wow. Rattlesnakes and now coyotes. It's touching, that's right here. But, <laughs> but you know what, you don't notice the place. That's what you said, a lot of the locals don't even know this is here. That's right. Yeah, 95% of the people that visit Taliesin West are from out of state. Wow. Or from out of the country. Well, they're missing out. They got the locals <laughs> got to go over here, right? Right. This place is amazing. Wright's anchor and muse was nature, which he spelled with a capital N. No better example of this can be seen than in the design of Taliesin West, with its living and workspaces open to nature through walls of windows, native stone and hardwoods, Taliesin West blends beautifully and naturally with its desert surroundings. This is just beautiful, this whole look here. The, uh, the big room on the left is the big drafting room, okay. and then up above in the center is what we call the guest deck. It's a series of cubicles for overnight guests. Oh, wow. And then on the lower level is our dining room. I went over walking through there. Yeah. And then the area to the right is the residential Actual portion of Taliesin. Yeah. So this is Taliesin West. Love it. It's all, all linear, all squares, yes. all, you know. And then Frank Lloyd Wright wanted to remind you that you're in an oasis in the desert. So you have the water and the green grass and the flowers, the planting. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful, beautiful. Yes. All right, well, let's check out the rest of it. This is amazing. Taliesin West started as a campground, but it would only take four years to complete. With nature at its core and some Asian influences that can be seen around the complex, Taliesin West is breathtaking. The grounds consist of Wright's residence, cafeteria hall, front offices, and auditorium. Between, between here and Wisconsin, the foundation has 18 pianos. Wow. Frank Lloyd Wright insisted on a piano in each of the public spaces. Wow. He must have loved his music. He loved playing. The next to the last building that Frank Lloyd Wright built on this campus was the Cabaret Cinema. But the most important place at Taliesin West is the drafting room. It's here that every winter students of Taliesin travel from Wisconsin to Scottsdale for their winter session. So this is the place where all the magic happens in this a lot of ways, the right? drafting room. Okay, but nobody's here, I guess. Uh, the apprentices went to Wisconsin last week. Aww. And so we missed out on normally them. this is bustling full of apprentices and computers, etc. It was in these hallowed halls that many of today's most iconic structures came to life and continued to be brought forth by new generations of architects. Though no matter where you take in the view of Taliesin West, you will be astonished. To truly take your breath away, stick around for sunset. As the last rays of the sun hit the Sonoran Desert and the McDowell Mountains, Taliesin West comes alive in the night sky. Enjoyed it. And this wasn't everything. I mean, you just did a quickie for us. Yes, you just saw a very small portion of Taliesin West. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to it. People don't. People have to come here to experience it because we cameras can only capture so much. Yes, and it needs and, to be experienced. <laughs> and you know, it's pretty funny because as we're out here, I mean, everybody's walking up to you. Tours are going by. You're like a big celebrity out here. I loved it. <laughs> well, that was a coincidence. <laughs> really? Oh, it doesn't happen every day? No. You're being modest. Well, where can they go? What's the website? Because I want them to check yeah. the website out. FrankLloydWright.org is the foundation okay. website. And you get information on the school, tours, everything about the foundation. So it's worth visiting. Absolutely. And it was incredible. Thanks for having us. I appreciate it so okay, much. Okay, enjoyed. And thanks so much for being here with us. And until next time, just remember to enjoy.